So nothing manacles have been in game for quite a bit, and they've been noted as being a powerful exotic capable of making scatter nades viable in all types of content. However, scatter nades themselves have never felt as hard hitting compared to all the other grenades available, and even trying to buff them via controversial hold exotic trait has shown that even that doesn't work at times. They felt very inconsistent to use and 9 out of 10, you'll throw your whole grenade at a combatant and they could survive the initial blast still. Now though, with Void 3.0 and a few changes to them, now they feel great to use and actually kill major combatants if they get the chance to. They can even do an impressive amount of damage against mini bosses if you land a full hit, which is where today's build is going to be focusing on. With our grenades, I'm going to show you how to make the exotic and grenades themselves incredibly lethal to anyone caught within it. You'll have a ton of wealth being created, which can be used to increase damage resistance or increase weapon damage, etc. And I promise you, this isn't clickbait. If, however, I was going to do something clickbait, then I would say that if you enjoyed the video and leave a like, a sub and turn on your notifications, you'll be guaranteed to get the new raid exotic on day one. Now, enough of the jokes, for the subclass, you're going to want to focus on the abilities that will enable us to get grenade energy and all abilities back as quickly as possible, and ideally give you an edge when using our grenades. As nothing manacles, I've gotten a buff now, it will leave us with the option of using Devour instead of Chaos Accelerant aspect. As shown, I have Child of the Old Gods, which will allow me to create a Void Seeker via my Rift, and from here, the moment I attack the battle with my weapons, it will chase them down, drain their health, and grant me grenade and melee energy and defeating them will grant me class ability back. You'll then want to have Feed the Void where using Void abilities will trigger Devour, a perk that will increase your uptime for survival by a lot. And next, you'll then want to have Echo of Reprisal where final blows with a Void ability when surrounded will give you super energy back. Next, you'll then want to have Echo Explosion where Avoid abilities will cause targets to explode on death, Echo of Undermining where your Void abilities will weaken combatants by 15%, and Echo of Exchange, where mini final blows grant grenade energy back. As you can see firsthand, this makes pretty much any grenade focused build for the Warlock an absolute chaotic mess of pure fun and madness. Each time we charge our grenades, we not only apply a debuff to them, but they will also detonate from death and spread their void damage to others, but also given a constant feed of healing on demand. And you get two grenades via enough manacles, so that is times two the fun. But this isn't even this final form. From here, you then want to have around 80 to 100 discipline for the best cooldown for your grenades. And then you want to have powerful wells, so you can create two wells instead of one. And then you want to apply the elemental ordnance mod to trigger this. Explosive well makers, so you can get even more wells via void explosions. Well of tenacity for that 50% damage reduction. And then well of life for increased health regeneration, although this can be swapped out for front of might or well of ordnance instead. This is, hands down, the best setup you'll want to have when using scatters, as they excel in close range, and using them this way will allow you to take out large groups of combatants with one grenade, and then reap the reward straight after. It's absolutely chaotic fun and feels even better than Controverse Hold, well, my opinion. Now, extending this, we should make sure our weapons follow through with the mods we are using, so I've decided to use Hailing Confusion Pulse with Demolitionist so that I can keep my grenades up and going at all times. Thanks to the buff that connected weapons got against red bars, the weapon feels a lot more stronger in terms of taking out red bars with ease, while also allowing me to easily retain enough ammo to take on a bunch of minor combatants before reloading. Demolitionist or Wellspring is your friend and you want to have at least one of them available as backup, as you may end up in a situation to where you use up all your abilities at once. This may be a boss room or a certain encounter, but either way, any weapon that has the roam for the primary slot will help you a bunch. In secondary, we have the Telesto that's going to be doing a number of things for the build. Ideally, Telesto is also going to be playing a major role in creating worlds as we go along via the Explosive Wellmaker mod, which in turn will allow us to use the Well of Life mod since it will drop solar and void wells. As Telesto's projectiles are considered explosive, we can trigger the Explosive Wellmaker mod back to back while taking on everyone else we face. Alternatively, any explosive weapon can also help here, as that will still trigger wells to drop. But if you want guaranteed Void and Solar to drop, then Telesto is the main weapon you'll want to main, and trust me, it helps with bosses and mini bosses a lot. For Heavy, we then have the Red Herring Rocket Launcher, although this can be swapped out for any other Void Rocket Launcher you have. I've noticed that the Red Herring Rocket Launcher can roll with Golden Tricon, which is pretty damn powerful if I last remember with certain setups. As both our melee and grenades will also be able to prop the perk easily, you can do some crazy number of damage against bosses since the blast radius is quite wide, 
and you should be able to proc the perk and follow up with an ability kill if the boss is surrounded. The only downside of the weapon is the reload speed, which might make it tight to pull it off, but the timer given should give you enough time to pull this off before it's too late. For the stats, we need to focus on discipline and that's pretty much it. The key to making enough of mana calls and scatter grenades great is to make sure that your discipline stat is always filled and we have at least one grenade available when we need it. Ideally, 80 to 100 is a good area to focus on and as mentioned, we have a lot of world being put into the build to keep this one stat and generally all our stats going. So from here, you'll then want some filler mods to help push these areas up. Now, grenade kickstart mod will give us some grenade energy back every time we spend a full grenade off and this will help with the passive nature of our grenade stats. You'll then want to have Absolution for reducing all ability cooldowns via orbs of power collected, and then you want to have Distribution and Bomber, which will both push our ability cooldowns further. You do not need to expand on the grenade stat anymore from here, as you should be able to get a full grenade back after using one straight away. Leftover wise, we don't have a lot. We have the Ashes to Assets mod for gathering super energy via grenades, Harmonic Siphon for creating orbs of power via matching elements used, Thermal Shot Plating for reduced damage from Arc and Solar, and Rocket Launcher Scavenger for gathering more rocket ammo. So as we have covered the subclass, weapons and stats usage and pretty much everything you'll need to know, here are the mods compiled and how the build now plays out. For Head we have Discipline, Harmonic Siphon, Ashes to Assets and Battle for World mod, Arm we have Discipline, Grenade Kickstart and Elemental Orders mod, Chest we have Discipline, Cookers of Dampner, Thermal Shot Plating and Explosive Wallmaker mod. Leg we have Discipline, Absolution, Rocket Scavenger and Well of Tenacity mod. Bond we have Mind Discipline, Bomber, Distribution and Well of Life mod. So with the completion of the build, you have now made enough manacles viable for general or endgame content. This build will be offering a lot of damage that can be spread out thanks to the Void Explosions that will trigger. And from here, you'll be able to get increased ability regeneration, increased defense, increased debuffing, and lots of wells and health recovery. All of these stacked into one can make running endgame content such as master content now viable, since using enough of mana calls or even scatter grenades in general won't that much of an option to try. Controversy hold on the newly updated vortex grenades are still going to be dominant in endgame because of the damage and energy you get back. But now that scatter grenades can put in some work, they may have a challenger. Now if we try this in GMs, I can see it being fairly good for staying alive and taking out groups of combatants in one go, since debuffing real ability is a thing, and the devour perk will keep our health going as long as we get kills. With the right weapons to match with the corresponding champions, I can see this filling in a niche for certain nightfalls, like Exodus Crash, Fallen Saber, the Light Blade, etc. Any type of nightfalls that has combatants clustered up in one small area. On the other hand, when not playing in game, the build fits in pretty perfectly for whatever you have in mind. I've been using this a lot in campaign missions and seeing how effective scatter grenades are, and now they really make me proud to use the exotic and grenade in general, as they really are usable. They're not OP, but they are usable to a high degree, and are great for nuking areas to kingdom come. The only issue with using the build is that you are at risk of killing yourself if you use them point blank with combatants nearby. Now of course this can be easily avoided by just watching your space, but if you are low on health and use these point blank at a combatant near you, then you're going to have a rough time. But we all do this from time to time, so it's not that much of a biggie, right? Right, so overall, if you have nothing manacles stashed in your vault, I would highly recommend you go and get them out and give them a try. They feel great now and actually slap in PvE. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny news and content. Once again, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you in the next one.